Welcome to the April 30th Hadley Public Schools Hadley School Committee meeting. Um, we will be joined by Paul Pfeiffer uh, as soon as he's available, but is there a motion to begin the meeting? Move to begin the meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Here we go. Um, I had one adjustment to the agenda, which was um, adding a motion to transfer up to um, an established amount of, ex of dollars for expenses to the school choice account, and that amount was 695486 um, We'll add that to the agenda and talk through um, where that's coming from. Um, so was there a place that we prefer to add that? Under, just under action items. Yeah, action items. items. Okay. okay, we'll put it with the, above the budget. And um, were there any other requested adjustments to the agenda? Mm -hmm. Okie okay. All right. Presentation, public hearing on fiscal year 20 budget for the public. Yes. So <laughs> there is, there's really not a whole lot that has changed since the last time you've seen it, except for taking care of the gap that we had. We had just over $100,000 of the gap. And we address that. Uh, some of it has been addressed through new hires that we know of. And in some cases, we've had some reductions to tuitions, out of district tuitions that we know of right now. And so that allowed us to make that adjustment without um, making any cuts to programs or personnel in the budget. So you have a large and comprehensive budget document. You all have seen these data at various points of time during the school year. The purpose of the budget document, hey Jack, come on up and join hey us. Jack. There's a seat right next to Mr. Shannon and you can see the table. Oh gosh, sorry about that. I should tell you to come over this way all the time. So we just started talking about the budget. And you um, had everybody received an electronic copy of it. I know it was emailed to you, yes. and I'm sorry you don't have a device with you, but uh, just high points on that. Oh, you do. Look at these things. Of course you do. Uh, so They're it's, attached to their body. There you go. <laughs> um, I was saying to the school committee that a lot of these data are data that the school committee looks at throughout the year. The purpose of organizing the budget in this huge and comprehensive document is so people in the public can essentially what this document is designed to answer is what is the organization trying to accomplish, what's the resource allocation strategy the organization uses to do that, and what are the performance measures or how are we doing based on what we said we were trying to accomplish. The bottom line that the school committee votes on is to approve, if they choose to approve the budget, a balanced budget of $8,472,284.40. That represents an increase of 1.23% from fiscal year 19, or just over $100,000 in total operating expenses. On the local contribution side, it represents an increase of 2.6%, and uh, that's because we had a decrease in grants of just over 6%. Some of the trends that we've seen is that our enrollment since FY10 has declined. The school committee talks about that often. There are enrollment data found on page five. There's also enrollment data, very specific enrollment data in the last section of the budget. But we can see the decline that has happened since FY10. There are, the state government right now is considering legislative remedies to address that. And that isn't just in the changing of chapter 70 funding, but specific legislative remedies to address declining enrollment that's something called the Low Enrollment Adjustment Factor, or LEAF, that Senator Comiford is supporting, and also rural aid. I don't believe that Hadley would qualify for rural aid, but we would definitely qualify for the Low Enrollment Adjustment Factor. Uh, and that's what I testified at the State House about, so we'll see how far that gets. I will have you know that uh, in that testimony, Representative Peich, the co-chair of the Education Committee, is still a big proponent of regionalization. Um, she still advocates for that strategy uh, as a solution to address declining enrollment and budget deficits. Uh, many of the superintendents talked about how that does not always bring about the expected change. It, it doesn't always deliver in the way that's expected. Um, but I just wanted to let you guys know that that still is high on her agenda. And of course, any so type of regionalization 
or union agreement would require school committees reaching out to one another and towns having that conversation. We have made a concerted effort to improve our programs as part of addressing declining enrollment. At the elementary level, we've made significant uh, improvements to our tiered interventions. That's what you hear about, about the MTSS model and in individualized instruction. We've made investments in social and emotional supports across the district in all kinds of ways. Uh, our STEAM lab at the elementary school. We, are, we have looked at our, our secondary course offerings, as you know, some of the course offerings that Sir Simmons brought before you. Um, so we have tried to make those more relevant. We also, for next year, uh, will be applying for something called an innovation pathway in business and finance. So Sir may have mentioned this to you folks, I can't remember, but what that would involve is that the courses that he's kind of identified as preparing students for the business and finance pathway, they would take uh, agreed upon courses, they would have to do an internship or a capstone project, and we would not only um, receive, if we were successful in an application to the state, we would be recognized as having an innovation pathway, we would receive funding for the development of that pathway, and we also would make a designation on a diploma for a student, which might be helpful for students who are interested in pursuing business or finance as a major in their post-secondary options. Um, we also have a place in the schedule, and I believe we will be prepared next year to offer as an elective uh, a fire safety course, a fire science course. The chief of uh, the fire chief and the lieutenant have agreed to teach the course. It would prepare students; they would be ready to take the exam. They wouldn't. You still have to go to the fire academy, but if there were students who were interested in pursuing careers in public safety, specifically fire, at this point, they would be well positioned to do that. And then we would look to add on to that a whole public safety offering that would give us two years of public safety courses, one focused on fire, one focused on law enforcement and criminal justice with options for internships with fire or police in their senior year. These things are designed to address the, the heightened competition and declining enrollment in all districts in the Valley, so that's part of our strategy. Uh, the, on the budget you see uh, small charts, but uh, page 21 where foundation budget per people has increased by just about a thousand dollars, just shy of a thousand dollars. When you have declining enrollment, small changes in foundation budget per pupil don't help your bottom line as much as you would like. So we're happy for any foundation budget money. That's good for the town. Uh, the, the flip side of that is that circuit breaker is, so that's our reimbursement of 72% when it's fully funded. I think it's supposed to be 75, frankly, when it's fully funded. It's a reimbursement for cost for educating children with IEPs when those costs exceed four times foundation. So that only down, that it, we want town to get money, but just know when foundation goes up, it's harder to clear that ceiling of getting your circuit breaker reimbursement. We are very grateful that our town continues to fund the schools above required local contribution. The graph on page 23 shows the extent to which they do that and the town is extremely generous. Um, what they are required to give is in the dark purple, uh, the chapter 78, which is what they get from the state, um, and typically because of the wealth factor of Hadley, which is determined by property values and aggregate income taxes paid, um, they are expected to pay, their ability to pay is quite high. That's why the dark purple is so high, in poorer communities it's much lower. The turquoise is less because the state says we'll give everybody something. Um, and then our town, that orange, is the extra local contribution. So the town has been very generous and we are extremely appreciative. Uh, our school department, we continue to use choice revenues to support our operating costs on page 26. You can see our projection for school choice fund balances and later on in the budget a more detailed view of FY20. Remember those projections, especially for FY20, are based solely on backing out graduating seniors. So those will get updated as, as well, you see it every month in the revolving account report. Um, so when you start looking at what are we spending our money on next year, uh, 
on page 27, you start going through the, the functional classifications, where we're spending our money um, in large function areas, what percentage of the budget we spend the most money on, which continues to be teaching, instructional expenses, and leadership. Uh, I said page 31 is my favorite picture. Can we all just pause and say how cute that is? Is that so cute? My favorite. And, uh, and then if we start looking at where we're getting our revenues from, that starts on page 34. You can see where we had that decrease in grant revenues, and we still rely predominantly on the town and the town's excess above local required local contribution. Expenditure detail is found on pages 36 through 47. So you have, um, again, kind of clusters that aren't as large as the first graph or table, a little bit more detail in 36 and 37, and then light item details through page 47. Our capital expenses are outlined on page 49. This budget is also available for the public to view on our website. That has our current 10-year capital plan and what we expended funding on in FY19. The informational section, which begins, I think, right around page 50, I should know, or 52. Um, that information, although some folks would say not 51. 51, thank you, not directly related to the school department budget, again, because the town is the one that contributed, contributes the lion's share of revenue for us. It gives the community a picture of what the town's revenue picture looks like, particularly property taxes, because those are primarily what fund the schools. I also added information on meals and occupancy taxes. You can see that in FY19, I only had, it was only available through December. So there's a lot more meals and occupancy taxes that will come in. The question, so with our, um, also the informational section provides a lot of detailed information on school choice. Where do students come from? Where do they go to? Where do we see deficits in enrollment? And that can help us think when I sit with the principals to say, all right, well, what do we see and what does it mean and what should we be doing to try to recruit and retain students? And, um, and then in the final pages, there is a great deal of information that we go through throughout the year on our performance measures. MCAS, our dropout rates, our graduation rates, how our students compare in terms of surrounding districts and post-secondary preparation. Uh, how we're doing with literacy growth, our PBIS, a positive behavioral intervention and supports initiative, and some information on student demographics. Overall, I think that we are presenting the community and the town with a fiscally responsible budget. We have been able to fulfill all obligations under collective bargaining agreements, have not reduced any staff or cut any programming, and the increase is 1.23%. I believe CPI for this year is closer to 2.5% so far, and consumer price index uh, rate of inflation. And um, again, the town's increase, about 2.6. The senator's budget had just about two and a quarter increase to Chapter 70 funding. The house had closer to 2.6. I'm grateful that the town went with the house's more kind of generous, that their increase reflects their increase to Chapter 70. And, um, and overall, again, I believe we've presented a responsible budget. And each year we anticipate that our data will get better, that we'll have better information on projections, and we'll continue to analyze the data so that we can make better decisions about programming and particularly to address the issue of declining enrollment. That's the budget. Let's say it's an impressive report. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> There's a quiz on it at the end of the meeting. So. You know, I mean, years back, we would long for this kind of report and uh, right. said one day. And Annie, this is incredible. Well, I thank you. I'm a little, I, I really want to, I, I, my Excel guru here, which even they'll get better when I let this help me more with that. <laughs> but you can tell, I love charts. A nice little obsessed with charts, Mr. Done. Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> I love them. I love pictures, making the bars shiny. It's yeah, love them. <laughs> well, there's a ton of data here, and it mm -hmm. just really helps support uh, a lot of the case that you make um, around what our schools' needs are, and it helps the town uh, justify ongoing support for the schools. So, mm -hmm. thank you. 
Yeah, thank you very much for that feedback. And uh, I, I do want to underscore thank you to the town. I think that the town is happy to invest in the schools. I feel a professional and personal obligation to provide them with information about what their return on investment is and that we're being responsible with their money and because they are, they are extremely generous. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Sure. Any questions? Oh, I'm giving the amount, right? A lot of information. It's really, it's good to be able to kind of see the whole picture from all of the different uh, angles and sources of information. So thank you for pulling all of that together in a very colorful, coherent, and uh, you know, informative package, including great pictures of our kids and great environments. And I got the Eiffel Tower in there. I so love that. Nice <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's the next step for this? To uh, approve it, I have to remember make sure that we do that so we can go to town meeting with it. And in the, it's approving just the total amount. That's all you have to do for our FY20. So if we move to action item 6A, which is adoption of um, the FY20 budget, I would need a motion. Uh, to approve the uh, FY20 budget at a total of $8,472,284.40. So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Perfect. That's one action item. Done. Okay, an additional action item that we had added um, as an adjustment to the agenda, if we can move into that, is um, a transfer um, into of, of expenses into the, sorry, transfer from school choice account. No, I always get it wrong. So yeah. Say it. Chris, Chris we say need it. Uh, the authority to transfer up to the budgeted amount expenses from the local budget to the school choice account. Got it. So this would be a motion uh, to transfer up to $695,486 of expenses to the school choice account. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay. Great. Um, I think we're going to move now into number four, reorganization of the committee. So annually, um, this is the first meeting that occurs after election where um, we had a school committee position line on the ballot. And so as such, every year we always uh, re-examine the positions of chairperson, vice chair, and secretary and then we appoint all of the different um, subcommittees or liaisons that we have, including the policy subcommittee, finance and tri-board liaison, the liaison to the capital planning um, committee on the town, and the uh, collaborative uh, representative as well. Um, I think that all of us have served in, in some of these positions uh, in terms of liaisons or representatives. Uh, and are happy to answer any questions, I'm sure, about, you know, questions if, if there are any about the roles themselves. Um, just a question about a point of order, I guess. Paul is not here. Um, are we able to nominate him or include him? In, I think those are the best people to nominate. I, yes, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, if you're not here, you can get all of the assignments. But. Yes. Um, I just want to make sure he is eligible also to serve on any of Because his term is still yes. Yep, perfect. Okay. And I'm pretty sure there was somebody at a reorg previously that we assigned to something who wasn't physically I think we did, yes. <laughs> Most I likely. <laughs> Probably. So, um, just uh, functionally, um, is there, are, are there any of these positions that would be easier or harder to do with his, um, you know, being in New Zealand? Well, he is the liaison um, for capital planning, right? Which is also with the fields. It is with the fields. Um, and if, I mean, of course, if other folks were vying for that, I'm sure that he would gracefully say, please feel free. But he is scheduled back in August, I think. Mm -hmm. Does that sound right, Chuck? They're coming yeah, back in August. Yeah, exactly. he's coming back uh, like at the end of August, as soon as their school year ends and mm -hmm. ours begins. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, And I'm assuming his kids will let him come back with them. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, just Addy's I mean, coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the, the, most of the capital gets, uh, goes to fall town meeting. Mm -hmm. So right. it probably, I mean, probably be in good shape. 
So I think it's a great question. Yeah. Um, it seems like so far he's been, he's been able to do coordinate whatever needs to be coordinated uh, from a distance, which is very awesome. helpful. Um, okay, well, let's start with chair. Um, I, I'm in the current chair. I'm happy to continue serving as chair unless somebody would prefer and like to have that role. Motion to um, approve Heather as chair. Second. Second. Third. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. Thank you. I, I am happy to continue serving as Thank you, chairperson. Sir. You are welcome. Uh, vice chair and secretary. Um, Paul is the vice chair and secretary currently. Um, Do you probably uh, be fine with that moving on to someone? Perhaps? Probably. Yeah. As somebody interested in that, I think typically, uh, you know, if, if I am not able to attend, the vice chair steps in and runs the meeting. Um, we don't really have secretary. You are our, our okay. note taker. Uh, and I, I don't know that there's any specific um, requirements other than um, being chairing the meeting when the chair is not able to attend. Anybody interested? We can nominate Paul for when or we can hold on it if for when he comes back or is able to join us to see if he's still interested in maintaining that role. I nominate Paul. Okay. Can we make sure that he would agree if yeah, of course. Let's, as long as he's in agreement, of I course. would agree we'll hold on. That. Unless one of you is interested. My travel schedule is so variable that I would feel uncomfortable about not being there in case you weren't yeah. there. No, okay. That yeah. sounds good. Let's hold on um, electing uh, the vice chair yet until Paul is able to join us. Okay. Um, and he said he'd join in about a half hour, so that's uh, like eight minutes from now. Great. Okay, policy subcommittee. So currently... Um, that would be Keith and myself, um, and the duties around that have been, you served on this before, okay. so I forget if you did. I have not. This is basically on an um, established schedule. We come in. <laughs> it is established. It's just and, and I. And reestablish. <laughs> on a somewhat established schedule, we come quarterly. in and review um, a set of policies. We get through everything that we can. We've got one today here for final read. Um, and essentially, we just try to make sure we're keeping all the district policies, um, the most current, up to date, especially if there's any legal considerations or um, mask organization uh, mm -hmm. considerations that they've sent us. It's, um, it is a posted meeting, and it's usually we do it first thing in the morning, um, and it takes maybe three hours when we meet. Uh, but the benefit of it is that we have a pretty um, thorough understanding of it when it comes obviously to the first read we would be you'd be expected to speak to kind of the reason behind a change uh, or a recommendation uh, in order to make sure that everybody um, on the committee understands the thinking behind why something needed to change it's been a fairly um, I, I shouldn't say smooth process but it has been pretty smooth I, I think we've had a couple policies that have garnered more attention than mm -hmm. others and that we've done due diligence in being able to revisit those as needed thinking of uh, like dress code dress or code. graduation mm -hmm. dress as yeah. well so yep. um anybody interested i have it oh. all three man i sold that one <laughs> i have an interest in it um in particular if i may well nobody objects or okay and, and i'd be interested in continuing um, but I'm also good with if somebody else wanted to jump in. Mary? Well, of all the other responsibilities, it, this one seems to be one that I could work with my colleagues to coordinate around mm -hmm. my schedule, which is why I think I could um, swing this. It's definitely uh, able to be scheduled. Right. And three hour blocks are fairly easy for me. Yep. Well, we have three interested parties here. We want to, Keith, do you want to have Tara and Humara try it for a year, or what would you? I'm uh, I'm good with I'm good with that. I just I, I I'm I'm looking at the I'm looking at the whole I'm looking at the everything. So I'm just wanting to make sure we're splitting up we're splitting up duties and such. So. Yep. Awesome. Okay, so we will appoint um, Tara and Humara. Mm -hmm. All right, finance and tri-board liaison. 
So that currently is Tara and myself, um, although I have not been to a tri finance tri board meeting in many, many months um, or a select board meeting in many months. Usually you go yeah. um, and represent. I know we can't have more than two of us because we don't want to represent a we quorum. Don't want a yeah. So we usually do it as kind of a liaison. Yeah. Yeah, just a single person. Then we don't have to worry about if we forget to post the meeting, throwing right. that off. So we, we usually don't do that. Yeah, we don't have a quorum. It doesn't mean that everybody couldn't end up there, but they're public meetings. But whoever, our representatives, we try to keep it below three so there's not a right. concern about violating open meeting. Mm -hmm. And I know there's been times where I think I, I thought I could go and then something came up with travel and I know I've mentioned to you like I couldn't be there, but um, you've been able to attend sometimes in the past. Wednesdays are difficult. Yeah. So it is yeah. Wednesdays. It is the evening. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say, I, I mean, I, I think that there are informative meetings and I know that the town and the finance committee really appreciate the, the presence and I think that they are interesting meetings too. Yep. So it's usually at six, right before the regular select board meeting. It's scheduled from six to seven. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's a hard stop at seven because yeah, they start right at, mm -hmm. uh, at seven with the select board meeting. And it's not every before every select board. It's typically sometimes once a month, sometimes not even once a month, I feel like. But let's assume yeah. it's once a month. So I'm, I am willing to be um, listed as a liaison on this, but with the caveat that I would like to, if we could have a, another yeah. person, yeah. because I'm often unable with it being in the middle of the week to attend. Um, is that something that interests any of you? I can, I, I can, I can do that. Okay. So we'll put um, Keith and myself on there. Okay, liaison to town capital planning. So that's currently Paul. Um, is anybody, I don't want to speak to that one other than I know the fields are directly linked to it and our capital plan is obviously mm -hmm. um, infused in the town's capital planning. Uh, is anybody interested in that or do we want to put that on the table as a Paul continue? I think in light of the fields project and the continuity, the importance of continuity for that project to actually get over the finish line, I think it would make sense for Paul to do it if you were willing. Great. I agree if he's agree willing to continue. Okay. Oh, he'll be welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll tell him about B and E later when he joins. Okay. 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 Um, and then uh, the appointment of the collaborative for educational services. Have to do that, it again. Yeah. Yeah. I, would, I would support that. Is That's anybody I, clamoring yeah. to? Okay. I'm thrilled that you're the representative. I enjoy them, those so, meetings. Yeah, that's great. Okay. I, do, I need to ask on G, do we still need to do this, Chris, because we do it electronically or no? Well, we, we do yeah. have the so you signers and then we have the reviewers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay, signers for bills and payroll. Um, unfortunately, I cannot be a signer for bills. Uh, and I don't think I, I have not been a signer for bills or payroll in the last couple of years, um, given the bills. Yeah, I think it makes it simpler to keep you out of it all so we don't yep. mistakenly send you something you can't sign. Right. I'm happy to continue that. It seems pretty I'm fairly quick at responding. <laughs> fairly. He only gets after me every once in a while that <laughs> I forget an email. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Tara. We need three, Who else right? does them? Yeah, yeah we, we do need three. Yes. I think Paul is on it. Right okay, now. and are you the? Third I'm other? not, but I'm more than willing to be. Are you the third typically? I think um, you are. I might be. I, I know I sign every one of them. It's, yeah. it's um, Paul, Humera, and Tara right now. Okay. okay. So maybe it does make sense in this case, even given time changes and things, if Keith took. Took Paul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Paul's. I know we get the notices, so. Yeah, I get the we notices. Always, yeah, and then Paul can be an alternate. You can't be an alternate. No. So then Paul okay. can be an alternate. Good. If that makes sense for folks. So this, um, Jack, just so you know, this is essentially, it helps us to understand where money goes. So every time that there's a payroll run for um, um, any of the teachers, staff, anybody being paid, that's, that's one week. And then the next week, the off week, bills. is bills. So um, purchase orders and things like that that are being fulfilled, so whether that's for supplies or, um, you know, 
kitchen st equipment. I, there's all sorts of stuff that comes in through that, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's helpful to see where, where the money goes. Right. And the school is, I, as superintendent, we can't spend money without the authorization of the school committee. So they have to sign off on every warrant. Yeah. All right, great. Yeah, the, the town, I don't know if I mentioned, but the town actually holds the checks until mm -hmm. I send them the signed warrant. Um, yeah. And that way they know that you've approved it as well. So yeah, It used to be a hard copy that we'd go into the office. We all have a key and we'd go in and we'd flip through and sign it we'd all have to sign the cover sheet then we got digital so it got uh, all times. loaded online and we, we were able to <laughs> just scroll through on our devices and literally digitally sign yes. with our finger which is cool and the town does hold the money just so mr desjardins and i don't race off to vegas i mean that's really what they're protecting <laughs> all right um so we're gonna hold on b and e just to confirm when paul joins um, but otherwise, I think we have everything we need. Sure, hopefully he joins. Great. Because otherwise, if he hears from me, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. there may be some kind of changes to your representation of those facts. <laughs> okay. Um, public comment. Crickets. <laughs> All right. Action items. So we did A. We did our addition. Uh, we now have the second reading of policies G, H, and I. So we saw those first uh, last time we were here. Jack. May I use the restroom before we get into this? Absolutely. Sure. Of course. Of course. I just asked you, are there any questions about those policies? You can take some time to scroll through. I think they were all in our last packet. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, they they were fairly straightforward. So who said they were going to be on policy subcommittee? Tara and Humana. Tara and I, yeah. So on that policy review schedule, mm -hmm. you might notice that <laughs> this year, um, you can be thankful for this now, Keith, that this year, so we are, uh, ending at I, which means when we get together in September, we actually will be doing uh, IHB, starting with IHB, going through to L, and then also doing A, B, and C, just to play a little catch up. So okay. that's what we're going to shoot for in September, Great. which is essentially reading half of the policy manual. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's really sure, big. tell them now. <laughs> well, they're already they're, in. They're in. <laughs> <laughs> that's why she's telling them now. <laughs> But well, we all get to read them, right? This is true. So. But I yes. do think, I have said that we could hire MASC to just simply do this every year. But mm -hmm. I do think that there's value. I mean, certainly it, it schedules, it's a schedule that forces me to open the binder and read every single policy and check our adherence to it or things mm -hmm. have changed. I agree. And I think when someone else is doing that, you're, you're less likely to look at a policy unless there's a problem. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's one of the most important roles that we yes. play is yeah. setting policy. So, Knowing what, is, what it is is actually quite helpful. Yes. Yep. Well, and recognizing, too, if there's any kind of gap or something that needs to be addressed, which I think we have, you know, as mm -hmm. things have changed or as, um, you know, new modes of, like, thinking about fundraising and some of the things that we had to address in this round, too. Yeah, GoFundMe. Yeah, GoFundMe mm -hmm. and digital, you know, platforms, um, legalization of marijuana, all of those things, I think, impacted um, our policies. And there may be other things, too, that we just aren't, you know, aren't necessarily connecting. All right, so, Jack, any questions on the policies from you? I don't think so. Okay. We didn't either. They seemed like they were, um, I think we all agreed they're fairly straightforward. So this would be um, the final read. So I would need a, this is a motion to approve, right? Yes. Yep. So yeah. I need a motion to approve those policies. Well, what about, there were a couple that we did have some questions on. And so I was curious what, what, what that means. I didn't have a response from okay. Fred. So held. that means they're pulled. Yeah. So they're not okay. on review. I just pulled them out and they will go 
to September's meeting. Oh no, I take that back. June's meeting. Oh yay, we do have one before the end of the year. So we'll, well, we will have to schedule one over the summer. So like on, online we'll fundraising was put on hold. Yep. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then there is the, uh, there is also the, the do, do we ever get a response on the, the dueling vaping? Those are two, so I pulled out and I, okay. I don't have his response. Mm -hmm. I have a list of things I have to follow up with him on. Great. Okay. So that just means that some of these may come back as one-offs or mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. additions to, to be added to this section. Um, so this is for uh, policies in sections G, H, and I. Is there a motion to approve the second read? So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now we move into um, accounts payable warrants uh, from April 2019 that were paid. Is there a motion to approve the warrants? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll abstain. And we have the April 2nd minutes. Any questions or revisions to those? Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Hey. Hello. Hey, we assigned everything to you, okay? <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> okay, we're just on action item uh, 6D, approval of April 2nd, 2019 minutes. Motion. Any revisions, any Concerns? Okay. Nope. Motion to approve the minutes. Second? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and we'll just finish this up. The approval of the warrants, um, so payroll uh, submitted in April 2019. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the warrants submitted in April 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, um, before we move forward to the business manager report, let's go back. Um, Paul, we went through the reorganization of the committee and um, just going through what we have. Uh, chairperson, uh, I was nominated to serve as chair again, and I'm happy to do that. Um, vice chair, uh, folks had nominated you to continue serving as vice chair if you would like to maintain that role, but that's your call. Sure. Great. I mean, I can do it. Thanks for covering the chair again. Oh, you're welcome, and thank you. I'm glad you're uh, able to do that. Uh, policy subcommittee, we had gone with um, Tara and Humera, are going to be serving on that. Um, finance and tri board liaison, what did we decide? <laughs> uh, Heather and Keith. And Keith, that's right. Uh, and then the liaison to town capital planning. Um, you're currently the liaison, and given with the Fields Project, we would um, love to continue having you serve in that capacity if you would uh, be able to do that. Sure, I'd be happy to. I'll be back early on, so I can attend whatever we do. Great. Okay. Yes, Jack uh, Kelly here reminded us that Addie was coming back in August, but we asked if you were coming with him. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and then um, the appointment of the collaborative uh, representative, Humera, had offered to stay on in that role. Um, and we have the signers for bills and payroll are Tara, Keith, and Humera. And with Paul as the alternate. You as the alternate. Any, um, would you like to revisit any of those or talk about any of those, Paul? No, I think that's wonderful. Thank you for joining. So if we had this an alternate, Andy, does that mean I, I shouldn't sign on a weekly basis? It means you'll see it and you won't be given the ability to sign, right? You'll be able to see right. it and not sign. Yeah. Yeah, I see so it. And I, I guess I would need I to know sign. in advance. No, so these folks would be the signers, right? And he'd be the alternate. So you'd see everything, but you wouldn't be signing it. You would just see everything. And if okay. we were, if there would be some situation where he would need to be a signer, I would right. need to know that in advance, and I would right. include right. him if that week as a signer. Somebody were out of the country or unable to, you know, get online for mm -hmm. two weeks on a cruise or something. That's when I think the alternate kicks in. Okay, that's fine. I'm currently a signer. Currently an alternate. Is there anything that prevents him from signing? Can four people sign? I mean, everybody can sign if they want to, right? 
Oh, they certainly can. Yeah. yeah. So you can continue. You you can continue to sign. We'll just leave it the way that it is, and that way we don't have to know in advance if for some reason someone didn't, we'd have everybody signing. So just keep doing what you're doing. You'll get them, and you'll just keep signing. Just everybody who can sign, <laughs> sign. Well, we, we need. Jack, if you get it, we need to raise. <laughs> the way the software is set up, whoever gets it sent out as a signer has to sign it before I get the warrant right. back. Right. So, you know, that's that's the one thing right. about having four people sign is we no, need everybody so, to sign. Right. So, so these folks have to sign. So, would it, I guess I go back to if Paul isn't designated as a signer, does he still have the capacity to sign? If he, no. Oh, okay. So sorry. You'll just be looking at it. You won't be able to. You can try with your finger. It's not going to do anything. Yeah, mine is uh, view. <laughs> It, it says uh, Chris Desjardins has sent you the following document to view. Yeah, so you'll and be able to view it. Yeah, so I can view it, but not. I get please review and sign the attached document. Yeah. It, but and I'm not a signer. Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I send that to everyone. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> that's the message I put in there. The standard message. Some of you would not sign. That's the, what the email says. I have says, to revise the message. But it's not what the system oh, says. The yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Got it. That's true. So yeah, then yeah, then there's the little dots here. Yeah. Okay. We'll get everything signed. <laughs> Promise. All right. Uh, anything else before we get to the business manager report? Okay. Chris, expenses. Okay. Um, so these are run through 26th, I guess that was Friday, Thursday? Um, Friday it was. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are the expenses through Friday. Um, Again, not an abundance of surprises. You might look at it and say, how can I only have $188,000 left for teacher salaries to get us through the rest of the year? Um, but again, we have that nearly $700,000 of school choice mm -hmm. money that we've budgeted. The right. uh, main portion of that is in the teacher salary line. So uh, that certainly makes that a little bit easier to, uh, to deal with. Um, what you will see next month, we just could not get it done in time for um, this meeting, is we're going to encumber all of the salaries that are remaining for the, you know, for the rest of the year. Uh, so you will see those in the encumbrance column, and therefore the available budget will be decreased by that corresponding amount. So if you go to page 8... It shows right now we have a million fourteen thousand dollars remaining. Mm -hmm. I can tell you right now, after we encumber all of the salaries for the rest of the year, that will be a negative. Okay, right. and and you know very similar to what I did last year, that negative balance obviously, as long as it doesn't surpass the six hundred and ninety-three thousand dollars and change that you approved tonight, we're we're okay. Uh, and the initial numbers looked like it was going to be about a million two or so uh, in salaries. So, you know. That certainly gives us quite a bit. Obviously, with the um, school choice money, that's why I said up to the budgeted amount, because mm -hmm. if we don't need to use it, we'll carry it over into next year. And if something happens and we need to come back and revisit this number, we can do that at a future meeting. We certainly could, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. When the encumbrances are there, Jack, when you're looking at the expense report, as a rough estimate for things mm -hmm. that you know kind of you know what the expenses for the entire year. So in December, when you're looking at the report, if the encumbrances are there and you're looking at a teacher salary line, halfway through the year, we should spend about 50%, right, is what it should look like. If it were at 100%, then the school committee would say, that looks like a problem. You spent all your money and it's January. At the end of the year, there are some lines that will go over and we have the ability to transfer money, but the school committee has to approve that too. We can't just transfer money without bringing it back to them. All those get approved at the end of the Okay, grants. Uh, so we've used most of the grant money. Circuit Breaker, you can see we're carrying over just under $200,000. That is what we will carry over into next year. Um, I think we can actually, yeah, in fact, we can carry that much over. Uh, you're limited to how much you can carry over if that's, that's within the limitations. So. Uh, that's one of those accounts, again, that's very helpful to actually have a balance in because, you know, if you happen to get an unbudgeted out-of-district placement, right. we can always reach to that account to cover it. 
all the other grants have been fully spent at this point in time. The one remaining is the 290 Health Grant, uh, about $9,000 of that. Um, and that will continue to be spent down through the end of June. Well, actually, until about mid-June. Renee uh, handles this grant. This is the grant that was canceled for next year. So as you can see, it's $64,000 that we won't be seeing in next year's uh, budget, I guess, to offset expenses. Um, and I know that what Renee has done is she's filed an amendment with the grant to move out some of the items that um, she deemed, I guess, less important than stocking up on supplies and making improvements uh, you know, in the facilities. I know she bought blinds and, and you know, items like that to be installed in the nurses' rooms. And uh, so we're utilizing the rest of the grant money for that, which you know, will, will be a big help going forward. Mm -hmm. That was good news you forwarded about the financial, the finance, uh, financial literacy fair grant yeah, that yeah. Sarah Simmons got. And we have a nice press release that will go out, and we expect media to be there to interview Sir Simmons and uh, any students who are interested and cleared for that on that day. I'm part of that class. We're having it like May 10th, something like that. Mm -hmm. Most of what we're doing right now in personal finance is related to getting ready for that presentation. Mm -hmm. I'm excited right. about it. You guys yeah, have great. really should, good topics. It should be an interesting time, sir. Make sure to use the grant money, <laughs> all of it. Um, As you should. Yeah. Well, it sounds like a lot of different informa informational booths that cover you know, I mean, I'm reading this car buying, paying for college, oh, labor yeah. power and job skills, personal freedom, minimizing tax liabilities, house buying, living on your own money tricks, investing in credit scores and reports. That all sounds like very, you know, hands-on, real, yeah. applicable, you know, content that And the kids students can are use. the ones designing the content yeah. for it. They're running all the yep. information. Books. Personal finance is an interesting class, and I'm glad that now it's a graduation requirement. Because yeah. there are people that yeah. complain, like, oh, we never learn how to do that kind of stuff in school. But now you can't really say that. Now you, you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's great. That is, that is great. And I, I don't know, the personal finance giant Jenga Tower of Death sounds pretty cool. So. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's when awesome. Sir teaches personal finance. Yes. There's something with a giant Jenga Tower of Death that's related to it. Awesome. We haven't experienced that yet, but I'm guessing we will at some point. Mm -hmm. At the fair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Revolving accounts. How's lunch okay, looking? Town no, yes. not town meeting. No, this is a school committee meeting, which is open to the public. Okay. The annual town meeting is here on Thursday in the gym Second. at 7 p.m. Very good. Thank you. Very You're much. very welcome. Uh, so the revolving account report. Uh, you, know, you can see the lunch still um, in the negative. Uh, you just gave up. up. Really kills me. You just um, gave up. Yes. Uh, just check this out next month. That's all I have. Um, you can see the others. Uh, you know, preschool kind of bounces up and down. Really, a, a lot of it is a timing issue. Depends on when deposits are made. Um, student activity account had some big increases. Uh, when I asked Dee about it, she told me, "Just wait. There are some big checks to go out as well. So you know that will mm -hmm. drop back down." School choice, as you can see, that balance is pretty mm -hmm. large. And this is why I asked you. For the approval this month to um, use some of that money because you know it, the the balance gets high and then people wonder geez, you know are you sitting on that money when in reality out of that million dollars we're budgeted to use seven hundred thousand of it you know but, right. mm -hmm. um, so that that will be decreased not by the full amount obviously but by some um, athletic revolving that uh, that's showing a nice balance again. Um, which actually, when I looked at it again, I said, wow, we really came up. I think what happened was that uh, January didn't have the deposits in it. We got extra deposits in February um, that were deposited by the town in that month. So basketball season, um, you know, really had a lot of uh, gate receipts. And it brought it up where you can see, I mean, we're at 15,600. We finished last year at 5,200. So looking really good That's in great. that particular account. All right. Anything else on the business report? Okay. Hey, can I just ask a quick question? Uh, so the uh, choice seems to be going up at 40 or 50 pounds a month. That's correct, yes. And then 
I'm assuming, Chris, that it only does snow during the school year, the academic year, so nine months a year? Uh, it does go up every, actually, we receive a payment every month, even in the summer. Uh, what happens is from July through November, we get an estimated amount, and then they kind of true up the numbers in December, and we'll get that amount for the remainder of the year, and so when they true up that amount, you know, it also, it, it trues up the prior five months that we've gotten as well, so, uh, you know, you see a much bigger increase or decrease than what you would expect. Um, and then in June, we, uh, they, they kind of true it up again, but we also put in for what's called the SPED increment. They, they include most of the SPED amount, and that would be for uh, special ed students who come into Hadley. They include most of that in the payments that receive every month. They have uh, pretty much an estimated amount that we get, but the amount that we submitted was far in excess of that. So we're expecting to get a, a pretty good size June payment this year as well. And these are expenses, quite honestly, that the budget has absorbed throughout the year. Um, so that's it's a really nice bonus if we can not utilize any of the SPED increment in June because we were able to just absorb it within the budget uh, and carry it forward into next year. Great, thanks. Okay. Uh, our next regular meeting date is May 28th, 2019. Can folks just take a minute to see if that still works on their calendar? Mm-hmm. It works for me. Paul, does that still work for you? Okay. Uh, I actually don't think it will. It's a Tuesday. Yeah, it's a Tuesday. We moved it forward a day. Oh, it's a Tuesday. May, right. Well, it's Tuesday for us, so May 28th would be Wednesday morning for you. The day yeah, after. Yeah, actually, that. I had it as the 29th or 30th years. Great. Okay, so it does work. Okay. Good. The 28th. Perfect. Um, I know I had two topics that I asked Annie to, to add, so if you want to think about these um, in advance. One is um, I'd like to better understand for field trips where a travel agency is used, um, what the process is for going about um, selecting that travel agent. Mm -hmm. And I ask because um, I want to be sure that if there is supposed to be any kind of um, uh, bid is the wrong word, but if we have multiple travel agents that we're interested in helping to support a student um, field trip, how do we go about uh, deciding which one can support that trip? It, can we select it based on experience or that they have a vested interest because they have children actually going on the trip, mm -hmm. things like that that I'd like to make sure mm -hmm. if we need to consider those for, for trips that we do. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other topic I had was I did receive an email um, through the uh, school committee open comment box on our website and um, from Melissa Aloisi asking about um, what channel to go through to bring to consider bringing back um, topics like uh, courses like home economics, food science, cooking, sewing, CAD, work, woodworking, and shop for the middle school. So I did write her back and said, um, you know, we had happened to just have reviewed the course of studies um, in an earlier meeting, but um, absolutely collectively we can talk about uh, really what would we need from uh, really through Annie from the district in order to have a meaningful discussion around, you know, what was the enrollment historically for classes mm -hmm. when we offered them in the past um, for these, what do students want to see in terms of elective courses um, that would be things that they're interested in and um, that we could get some actual enrollees, because I know we've had to face um, one a course fairly recently that was, we didn't have enough students interested. Um, Which was that? That was when we switched to, International food? Oh, yeah, uh, international last foods. Year, right? uh, okay. uh, it was either that class or a different class that I was supposed to be taking this year, but it got cut, and now mm -hmm. I'm taking mythology instead. 
Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. so it was international yep. foods. was one of them. There were two, and there were two food courses that were covered. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Um, questions like what would be required in terms of staffing if we were to add um, those classes and for some of these what would be required in terms of space and equipment if they had special requirements so I did let um, Melissa know that that we would be talking about that but those are some things that um, I'm hoping we can consider in our next meeting as to um, how to go about uh, evaluating you know from the students their interest and what we could support here especially in light of budget considerations, but also wanting to be marketing to uh, folks who want a choice in here and our own students who are interested in these courses. And also in May, you'll have, uh, Mr. Burns will be here to talk again about changing the history graduation requirement mm -hmm. to four years. Jack, you want to be thinking about that and talking to your mm -hmm. I heard peers. rumors about that. Okay. Well, yeah. you will be at the table as we discuss that. Any other topics that you'd like to be sure we cover in May that aren't already part of our standing kind of calendar year? <laughs> this may be something that was discussed earlier in the year that I missed, um, but on page 49 of the budget report, um, mm -hmm. there's a, uh, a table with priority number and projects for, I guess, various school improvements. Um, is there any way that we can maybe go a bit more in depth on what these would Capital consist plan. of sure. the sort of timeline for getting them done. Yep. So Absolutely. The, that's the capital plan? Yep. Okay. And that's good timing too, Jack. The way the town likes to fund, so our capital plan gets integrated into the town's capital plan, which is a huge multi-page document, and they typically like to fund capital projects at fall town meeting. They do some, it's annual. Most of it like to do them in fall. That's after they know their their revenue, they know what their free cash is, it's been certified, and they know how they ended the previous fiscal year. So this is a good time to be talking about capital because the capital committee expects us to give them input in the summer and really push for the projects that we want. Yeah. When did we have our retreat last year? What month? Was oh, that? and we'll have to schedule that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure it was in the I summer. I will make sure we, yeah. uh, I post it at the right place. Now, <laughs> oh, yeah. right. What an adventure that was. That it we worked out we really go to well the right still. Place. Right? Yeah. It did. It worked out. Yeah. <laughs> I, have a, I, I have a question that could just be foolish in an example of my memory. Um, on the uh, January 20th, uh, the January, January meeting, um, we had t there was the talk that the um, next regular meeting, there is, um, I believe, um, 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 Pam was going to be coming in and talking about special education. And it kept getting moved and moved. Let me check in with Pam about okay. that. that that's been moved a couple yep. times, so yes, I was curious if that, that was coming back. Special mm. program, yeah. I'm glad you remembered that. Yeah, good yeah. memory. Okay. Anything else for the good of the order? Is there a motion to uh, adjourn our meeting? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.